and welcome to Wound Care Advantages Product Relay, part of the Winter Wound Care Games series. This session is brought to you by Kerasys and presented by Chris Cranston. Please ask any and all questions that you have throughout this webinar by using the questions tab or the chat option on the control panel. I will now turn it over to Chris. Thank you, Callie, and uh, thank you to everyone who has taken time out of their busy day to listen to me talk a little bit about Kerasys, who we are, what we do, and how our products can benefit you. My name is Chris Cranston. I am a Kerasys product marketing manager. I have been with the company for about two years and have seen and been fortunate enough to be a part of the growth and success and see this product uh, benefit so many patients. So I'm really excited to be here today. Please ask any questions you have, as Callie mentioned before, and I'll try to make this conversational. If you have questions as I present here, feel free to ask them. Um, so we'll get started. Today I'll be talking on our wound care patient line, primarily our Merigen, Merigen Micro, Merigen Expanse, and a little bit on Shield and other products we offer as well. So we'll get going here. So a little bit about our company before we talk about the product specifically. We pride ourselves on our culture. We're based out of a small fishing village in Isafjordur, Iceland. It's a town of about 2,000 people. And this is where we outsource our product from. It is North Atlantic cod. And what used to be just a byproduct of the fishing industry, we now use as a medical device to heal hard to heal wounds. Um, and, and a lot of other different settings in OR and burns. So here's a little bit of our story and processing. Um, throughout this presentation, you'll notice some QR codes. Those have links uh, to more information. Um, so in this case, you'll see a little bit of our story and processing. So if you're watching from your computer and you have a phone next to you, feel free to scan these QR codes can provide a little bit more information on what I am presenting. And again, if you have any questions during this, um, you can, uh, my email was at the beginning and we'll have uh, email at the end should you want to reach out. Uh, so again, we pride ourselves on sustainability. Our goal overall is to reduce our net emissions to zero. We pride ourselves being a sustainable company using fish skin that used to be a byproduct the fishing that we do is very harmless. It is locally fished. Um, we're not concerned on overfishing, which has been brought up many times. It is locally fished waters. It is pristine cold waters, which is optimal for our fish skin. And again, we want to promote ocean conservation. Again, you've probably seen um, documentaries or um, news about overfishing, we are not involved in that. And in fact, we use about 1% of Iceland's fish. Um, so again, we are using very, very little and are able to impact the lives of so many patients. So here's a little bit about uh, how we process our fish skin. It is unique. So again, uh, the Icelandic cod or North Atlantic cod that we use is homologous to human skin. You'll see later on in the presentation the similarities uh, of human skin to fish skin. And again, there's no known risk of viral disease transmission. This is because of the cold waters. It is so cold that there is no bacteria growth. We use a enviro intact processing. We're not having to use as um, any strong alcohols or detergents. We're not tampering with it, which in turn, we're preserving a lot of the structure um, and properties that you want in this fish skin because it is very similar to human skin. It's a byproduct. It's something we're easily able to source. It's not something we're concerned about running out ever, and it's cost effective. And again, with retaining a lot of the structure and biology, we're able to recruit host cells and supporting the regeneration of human tissue. We're seeing results a lot quicker than other substitutes just because we're able to retain that. And I'll get a little bit into more of that. But here's a good overview of how we process. So we start by fishing for uh, fresh Atlantic cod. 
um, the byproduct we are able to source. Um, we have to make sure it's a clean piece of fish skin, no blood or contaminants. Um, so we make sure to pick out quality fish skin. We wash it and um, descale it so we get rid of the fish scales. I actually have some of our products here. So as you'll see, it this is a freeze-dried, um, descaled piece of fish skin. And we decellularize it so we get rid of those fish skins. Freeze-dried, we can cut it to various sizes. So we have um, a solid piece here. We have a mesh piece that's two to one, can expand. We recently have a private office edition with a silicone layer in the shape of a circle. So really, whatever your patient's needs are, we have sizes ranging anywhere from a three and a half or one and a half by one and a half square centimeter um, square, all the way up to a 250 square centimeter for our OR applications and large burns. Um, finally, we do a sterilization, um, it is ethylene oxide. And from there, it goes to labeling and shipping. So this is our four hallmarks and it, sorry, not our four hallmarks, but um, it was done, I can't remember by who, but there was a study that was done to talk about what are the four hallmarks of tissue engineering, what um, are the four biggest components that you need for tissue regeneration. Um, and these are broken down into four parts. Uh, one is a three-dimensional structure, um, having that scaffold to promote tissue regeneration, allowing um, that prolifer proliferation to allow fibroblasts to integrate. Uh, your natural me mechanical properties, um, it handles like skin. This is very flexible, um, pulling as hard as I can. This doesn't rip. Um, when you put in a sterile saline, it's a lot more pliable and flexible. It's easy to suture, staple, cut to size. We have an intact molecular organization, retaining a lot of, actually, all the properties that you would want in human skin, as well as a preserved molecular content. And that comes with um, the minimal processing that we do. We're able to preserve a lot of the properties that you want to see. And so, again, Keras is we are the only biologic skin substitute that can fill these four hallmarks. So looking at the natural molecular organization, I, I mentioned earlier that fish skin and human skin are, they look very similar. If I had whited out um, the fish skin and human skin, they look very similar to each other. So when you take a fish skin graft and you place it on the human body, the body doesn't think of it as a foreign substance we're oftentimes seeing integration in about seven to 10 days and, and seeing really fast results. Looking at the natural homologous 3D structure, we have a very porous graft, um, 10 times your 10 times greater porosity than um, amnion chorion, um, allowing more cell in growth, allowing um, forming that granulation tissue that you wanna see and overall getting to that stage of a split thickness skin graft, or you can continue to reapply this graft as it integrates um, until you get to a full closure uh, wound. Yeah, the next slide. So natural molecular content is our third point. Um, and this is just comparing human skin to fish skin. So it has all of your properties of collagen, elastin, fibronectin, protoglycans, your lipids. In addition, while we don't have studies on it particularly, um, a lot of studies we have is we do have some properties of omega-3s, which according to our users and some of our patients can help a little bit with the pain healing process. Again, we don't have studies on that. We are working on um, getting data on it, but we're retaining a lot of the same properties that you want in human skin. So looking at the natural mechanical properties, here you'll see one of our mesh graphs. We have very large graphs. It's very easy to handle, it's very strong. Um, you're not gonna have to worry too much about it ripping in your hands. Um, you can stretch it. So um, there's a lot of different applications and scenarios you can use it in. So this is just an overview of our total product portfolio. 
obviously today I, I, I'm just going to touch more on marriage in and a little bit of our private office, uh, which is a newer line, but we also um, are involved in the continuum of camp. We are used in the inpatient setting um, on the surgical side, and we also use on burns as well. Uh, head to toe indications. Um, we have, again, as I mentioned earlier, we have sizes anywhere from a one and a half by one and a half all the way out to a 300 square centimeter for the larger burn settings. And with that 300 mesh, it can expand even further to about 450 uh, square centimeters. And we have different configurations, as I mentioned. So we have solid sheet, uh, we have a mesh, and we even have a micronized version. Um, so this is a particulate. Um, it's not a powder, as I'll talk a little bit more why we are able to um, retain that 3D structure. It's not pulverized in any way. And again, we have um, that meshed is two to one. Just a little overview. We do have uh, a good military partnership. We've been active um, since our involvement, um, starting around 2016 when um, we came into the U.S. and were more involved. Uh, some of our studies uh, have been done with the military. Um, and again, this is just a little overview of that. So now getting into some research and publications of our graft. So I know a common setting for uh, wound care, you know, you have your DFUs, you have your VLUs, um, you have pressure ulcers. Uh, this is specific to DFUs, and this was a recent study as of 2023. Um, we looked at the benefits of our product in the setting of DFUs um, compared to a collagen treatment. Um, again, and, and seeing how it resisted our, for diabetic foot ulcers. And so overall, what we found is, and this is a testament to how quickly we integrate, is that we're seeing almost two times more DFUs healed within a 12-week period. Um, because of how similar we are, we're seeing a fast integration and getting patients healed quicker. You're also seeing a cost savings of about $2,800 uh, compared to a collagen allergen treatment. And again, if uh, you have any questions on um, these studies, uh, happy to answer those questions. Looking at um, healing time compared to uh, human amnion chorion, um, we tested on about 170 wounds. Again, showing that, that faster healing time um, compared to that. And so you can see that, um, again, it's about 0.0014. And this was a non-industry funded uh, double-blind randomized clinical trial. So this is uh, interesting. There's a couple things to note here. So this is Karasis Fishkin um, compared to fetal bovine. This study was done on Yorkshire pigs. And what you can kind of notice, so the, the top image um, on both top and bottom uh, show a little bit of the vascularization. Um, and so you can notice as you get to day 45 that uh, Karasis has completely incorporated. Um, and pretty much healed with little to no scarring. Oftentimes in, in fetal bovine, you're noticing a little bit of scarring, um, less pliability with the skin that you want, um, and overall showing those faster healing times and reduced contraction. Looking at donor sites, donor sites has, uh, is a very common use. We, we have used our product, um, not just in the outpatient setting, but also um, on the OR side of things. And so, again, this is going to healing time. While we, we don't have studies, the, the antidote from our physicians and patients is that they're seeing, seeing less pain with the use of our graft. And again, going towards that healing time. Um, talks a little bit about local infection. Our, our product does have a natural bacteria barrier. And again, that's another added benefit um, of our product as well versus the standard of care. Looking into indications and benefits for our products where you can use it. Um, looking at um, our indications, if you have a sort of a, a white fish allergy or a known fish allergy, um, you probably don't want to use this product, obviously. Um, or if you're using one of our shield products, um, 
uh, it's more geared towards private office, but it does have a silicone layer um, on top of that fish skin graft. So if you do have an allergic reaction to silicone materials, those are the contraindications. We're indicated for partial and full thickness wounds, trauma wounds, surgical wounds, um, pressure, venous, um, chronic and vascular ulcers, as well as diabetic ulcers and draining wounds. And we are the only fish skin medical device approved by any regulatory authority, including the FDA. So this is just an overview of our sizes. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, we have a wide variety of sizes. Our uh, Amerigen product line features a little bit on our smaller sizes to accommodate um, those hard to heal chronic wounds, um, diabetic foot wounds, Mohs surgery. Um, I'll show you some cases later on showing the benefits of our product in those cases. Um, so our micro, we offer various sizes, anywhere from a four square centimeter all the way up to a 38 square centimeter. Um, we have a solid fenestrated graft and we have a um, expanse and then you'll see we do have a shield line. And so this has an adhesive layer. Um, essentially, you'll, it's, you'll hydrate this in a sterile saline. It has an adhesive backing. Um, so it, it can be used in, in most situations. You don't have to suture or staple it. Um, and that silicone acts as a non-adherent layer. I'm not going to touch too much on that, um, as that is more in the private office setting. So marriage okay. and micro. Yes. Sorry to interrupt you. We did have one question that came in in regards to that last slide. Um, and it asks, can you clarify marriage in micro and expanse all have the same FDA indication or are they different for each product? So marriage in, marriage in micro, marriage in expanse all have the same indications um, along with shield. Um, the only difference with shield is that shield has that silicone contact layer. So if you do have an additional allergy um, to silicone, then, um, you know, obviously you can't use it. But in terms of um, the marriage in line, it all has the same indication. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. So marriage in micro, some of the benefits here, as I mentioned earlier, this is a particulate, not a powder. And the, the great benefit about that is CMS, it, you know, there are some issues um, we've had with providers um, who have used other products that are a powder form. This is not that, this is a bunch of mini sheets. Um, so we, we take little strips. Um, and we cut it up into little pieces. And so the advantage of that is, is that we're able to retain that 3D structure um, that allows for the incorporation of fibroblasts. You can also use this in uneven and complex wound beds and geometries. <clears throat> and so you can use this in addition to a sheet. So you can place this down, fill in your uneven geometries, um, and then you can place a, a graft on top um so again it's all under the code q4158 and again mentions the, the sizes we offer for marriage and micro now marriage and expanse this is a great economic solution for larger wounds um, obviously we have our seven by eight size but that does not take into account that it can uh, expand to a two to one that is very strong um and again it it has the same benefits but it allows that exudate to um, flow through this graft um, compared to solid, but obviously there's a setting for our solid pieces as well. And ideally you're cover using this to cover larger wounds and areas in the outpatient setting. So now looking at some various applications, and again, this features uh, all of our products. Um, so, I'm not going to get too in depth into these cases. I really just want to show, really point out the healing times here. And with application, again, you can suture it, you can stere strip it. Um, and as the graft incorporates, it'll start to build up that granulation tissue. You can continue to reapply as needed. In this case, there were um, multiple applications, about seven applications, as you can see, um, getting around to four months and um, at, at fully healed. 
Um, diabetic foot is a very common uh, procedure we, we use our products on. Um, again, this shows a circular graft to that size of wound. When you're applying this, you need a good debridement. Uh, we like to say in our company, if it doesn't bleed, it doesn't seed. Um, and trying to take care of any underlying issues uh, prior to applying. Again, this is a good case showing the benefits of our micro product. <clears throat> you can see in, in these most procedures um, that here, in this case, there is quite a deficit. Um, you can pack that area with micro, um, and then you could either place on top, or in this case, they just filled it. Um, they, it looks like they even hydrate it with, with, some, with some blood. Um, that's another way you can do it. You can hydrate in a sterile saline, or um, some of our physicians have used, have used blood um, to help incorporate and get the uh, fibroblasts. Um, and again, after five months, you can see in the last picture that it still is able to have that, that nice pigmentation um, with little to no scarring. Uh, this is a good use uh, with our product shield. Um, so again, it has that adhesive layer. Um, while this provider uses use stereo strips, you can use stereo strips. Um, you can use just the contact layer and then uh, a bandage over it, <clears throat> and then healing in about five weeks. Um, and uh, this is shield, but um, you can use this as well with our Merigen products as well has the, the same indications. Pyoderma, um, again, really showing just four applications. Um, and this, this wound was 11 months old prior to even the first application. So seeing healing and um, pretty and, and strong results after just two months is, is really impactful and um, coming fully healed at, at six months. Now looking at some other uses, this shows a good mix of, of our fenestrated graft being used um, in the first couple, and then um, looking at ways you can use micro kind of in those uneven geometries and tunneling areas and um, four months in healing. Pressure ulcers, um, I'm sure kind of getting the understanding here, uh, you can use in pressure ulcer setting, um, quick healing times, and again, this is just a quick overview of our application instructions. You can simply debride the wound. Um, wanna make sure you get rid of any necrotic tissue, any um, slough um, before applying. You can hydrate it in a sterile saline. Um, I've also heard of providers using it with, um, hydrating it with blood, um, but room temperature saline. This graft is also shelf stable, so it, room temperature, it is shelf stable for three years and there's no tissue tracking needed. And finally, use your chosen fixation method, uh, suture, staple, steri strip. And um, for our Merigen products, you can put a, a non-adherent layer over it um, so that the graft doesn't get caught when um, you're uh, removing that secondary dressing. And then we have some other not not necessarily products, but ways we can also help. Um, uh, one of my friends, actually, who, who works in this company, he has been a part of developing some technology that can help you um, and through the power of AI. So through Keras's Current, and this is available uh, to the outpatient setting, you can order online through our app. You can submit benefit investigations. And through the use of AI, um, there's a bunch of scenarios that we are able to input. And there are certain cases where, um, depending on the criteria you use, you can get instantly approved. It's not always like this. There are still some situations where uh, it has to go through our benefit investigations team. Um, but this is great if you have a patient who is looking to get an application immediately. Um, this is a, has been a powerful app and, and tool for our wound care providers. You can also access literature. You can view and pay outstanding balances. Um, again, receiving instant benefit investigation responses. And again, this is a uh, large part with the power of AI, which has become a great tool in, in this modern era. And finally, uh, another technology 
technological app is Keras is Cares. This is our patient app. If your patients are using our product, um, this is a great way for them um, to kind of track their recovery and healing process. Um, they can learn more about how to take care of um, their wound, what they need to know. Um, they can also give them uh, helpful recovery information. And also they can learn about who we are as a company, um, our values, vision, and commitment to patient well-being. And at this time, this concludes my presentation. Um, thank you for those who joined and I am excited to um, be here today and, and thank you guys for allowing me to present today. Great, thank you so much, Chris. We did have a few questions come in. So the first one asks, do all three products minus Shield have the same CTPQ code? Can you start with Merigen and expand and then move to Merigen when the wound gets smaller? Yes, yeah, so the CPT code for Merigen is, is 4158. Um, that's the same across all of our Merigen products. Um, Shield is an A code, um, A2019, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then what was the second part to that question? Um, if you can start with Expanse and then um, move to Merigen as it, the, the wound grows smaller. Yes, grow. absolutely. So you can, if you have a larger area wound, um, you can absolutely start with Merigen Expanse. And then as you start to get smaller and smaller, um, you can use our smaller size products. And again, these are just, these are samples. Um, this is obviously not a seven by eight, just it's showing the mesh configuration. Um, but as you get smaller, absolutely, you can you can use a smaller size. Perfect, thank you. And then we had one come in and it says, I know this was addressed, but could you remind me what the shelf life is for Keras and Merigen? Yes, Keras and Merigen, along with all of our other product lines, it is a three-year shelf life, um, shelf stable at room temperature for three years. There's no tissue tracking involved. Um, it's again, it comes in a very simple envelope, uh, has all the details of our products on there. Perfect. And then one final question, and this is in regards to your patient education portal. Do you mm -hmm. know what literacy levels are included in that patient education? So it, it overall, the, the patient, um, app is, is more on the generic side. We haven't gotten to, um, customized patient care. Um, it is something we would like to have in the future, but it gives a, a general outline of, of what to look for um, in the healing journey. Great, thank you so much. We'll give one more moment for any last questions that come in. And in the meantime, um, thank you so much for participating, everyone. This session will be available on demand once the recording has been uploaded into Lubo University. And again, I want to thank Chris and Karasis for being a part of the product relay. Oh, and one question came in. See, oh. um, the powered version is new to this clinician. Can this be put on DFUs and VLUs just the same as the sheet version? So the powdered. Yes. Oh, the, the powdered. Um, it, it depends. Um, it really depends on the wound that you're trying to use it. If you have a DFU, um, where it has some depth to it. Um, I think that's a great application for the, the micro product. Um, you can kind of fill in those deficits and then place a sheet on top of it. Um, or you could place marriage and expanse. You could do either or. Um, BLUs, it's the same thing. It, it really depends. I've, I've seen some with some depth where they'll fill in um, the, the depth there. In just that one case uh, that was earlier, there wasn't a whole lot of depth to it. They placed a sheet graft in this case, um, but there are other situations I've seen where um, there is some depth and they'll use a little bit of micro along with um, either expanse or, or just marriage in uh, as a solid or fenestrated piece. Perfect, thank you so much. If you awesome. have any further questions after the webinar, please reach out to myself and I'll make sure Chris gets them and you get the answers. Again, thank you to all that attended and thank you to Chris and Karasis. This now concludes this webinar. Thanks, Callie.